Hey, everybody, and welcome to Checkpoint on Campus, the number one show for collegiate esports in the whole entire world. I'm serious because we're the best and we're some of the only ones as well. Now, I am your host, Norris Howard, and we are also joined by our illustrious co host, the Galaxy Brain himself, Jacob Brothers. What's up, Jacob? What's up? How we doing? Yeah, and if you also take a look-see at the screen, you will see that we've got two guests with us today, Alex and Jesse coming to us from Uni Esports. They are the masterminds behind Looking for Group or LF Group. You guys have heard me talking about this resource for a number of weeks now, and we decided to bring these guys on to the show to talk a little bit more in depth about what Looking for Group actually is so alex jesse thank you so much guys for joining us on the show yeah what's up thanks for having yeah. us happy to be here yeah yeah and so first and foremost i definitely want to ask you know looking for group is is really the first of its kind it is a database where high school and college students can go and look up uh different sort of attributes about collegiate esports programs give us a little background on looking for group and how you guys a were able to to put it out and what you know drove that decision yeah so when we got into college esports we really started working with uh schools that were in the process of building their own programs so we were talking to a lot of folks who were trying to figure out how to roll out a program that was you know visible and bringing students in and what we kind of noticed was that there weren't very many really elegant solutions to that problem. Um, there are a lot of different, you know, recruiting services, but usually there was something challenging about each one. Like maybe, you know, it was hard to get students to stick on the platform or just to make those connections. So what we really wanted to do was build a service that was primarily focused at providing information, like really deep, rich, super accessible information about college esports programs to students. Um, and our plan was, yeah, we'll, we'll build this resource. We'll make sure all, you know, pretty much all uh, college esports programs are represented on the platform. Students can get information about game choices, but also about some of those, you know, university informational pieces that are important, like tuition costs, et cetera. And then we'll kind of take care of, care of the rest uh, as we go. Yeah. And so talking a little bit about, you know, the information that's actually on the platform, um, you know, for me it, as a journalist and, and Jacob can attest to this, part of what happens is that a new school just pops up and all of a sudden they're great at an eSport. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you guys determine um what schools to put on the platform and what information to put on the platform because if i'm looking to join a program uh you know i i, I want to know you know who are some of the top schools how do you guys sort of make that determination as to who to put yeah. on the platform <clears throat> so it's an important question because it, depending on who you ask you'll get very different counts of the number of schools that have a collegiate esports team right like some people mm -hmm. will say there's 1800 teams in the country there's 2000 what they really mean is that there's 1800 schools that have maybe a club presence or have participated in a big national tournament maybe they've sent a player or two and that player has said you know i go to x university um the schools we're trying to represent are ones that we feel have like a serious institutionally supported so you know a, a presence supported by the administration on campus that may or may not be a varsity program. It doesn't need to be a varsity program. It can be a rec program or a more casual program, but we're looking for that institutional support. We're looking to see that, you know, there are staff members who are kind of, or, a, you know, a staff member or even a coordinator who's sort of making sure that the program is legit and trying to set up opportunities for students. Yeah, you know, for, for us, the goal is to provide those high school students who come to the platform and are looking for, uh, you know, a program or a college where they can, not only play competitively, but join a community that really excites them, a really good program. We don't want to send them somewhere where maybe it gets disbanded after a year after they join or something like that. So that's kind of our primary criteria is, is this institutionalized as Alex mentioned, does it have support within the school and will it, will it last? So we can, you know, feel confident about putting it on there and recommending it to, to the students who visit. 
Yeah. And, you know, one of the big things that I always hear when it comes to, you know, the collegiate esports space is a lot of people throw around the scholarship thing. You know, do you guys have resources and, you know, any guidance on esports scholarships or what schools may be offering them? Because, you know, when I talk to parents of some of these students or, or potential esports uh, athletes at the college level, this is one of the things that they're asking a lot of. And uh, do you guys have that that sort of resource there? Yeah, we um, like one of the things that we really wanted to do is make scholarship information clear and accessible. So you can actually search the directory by schools that have scholarships. Um, but there's also an entire component of the site called the scholarship board, where you can just look at all the different scholarships that are game specific offered by every school. So I think right now we have about $2.7 million of scholarships that are listed on the site um, that students can find through the platform. Yeah, and, and, and Norris, as you mentioned, <coughs> excuse me, you know, the scholarship piece of it is one of the most mind-blowing facts about collegiate esports for parents specifically. Um, you know, not only is this website a resource for students, but as, as you know, people know, parents are super involved in their students collegiate decision-making, the research, and are really involved in that process. So when they can come to the site and they can find resources and they can, in a moment, head over to the scholarship board, have their mind blown by the fact that, oh my God, there's almost $3 million in esports scholarships. My kid can go to school and get paid to play video games. That's something that turns the light bulb on in their head a lot of the time. And then now, our goal is just to make that information easy to find, free to find, searchable, and, and you know, something that was uh, they could use in that, in that process of making a college decision. Yeah, one thing that Norris could agree with me on is that a lot of these tournaments just kind of show up out of nowhere, let alone the schools that show up out of nowhere. So these tournaments with these prize pools that come out of nowhere. So do you guys take into account, like, the schools that are participating in these bigger prize pool tournaments? Because, like, even, like, Northwood's a good example of, like, these tournaments that have these significant prize pools, these schools just kind of pop up out of nowhere. So when you're looking for schools to add or to, like, even get tabs on, do you ever, like, look at who's entering tournaments? So that's definitely part of our process for adding schools. It's kind of the way that we, you know, keep our ear to the ground. Um, I think that, you know, that forms a, a part, but then there's also sort of a due diligence of following up and saying, okay, hey, what's what's real? Is this, is this a sort of um, provisional esports program that's being thrown up to compete for this prize pool or is it something more stable? Um, a big indicator for us that a school is like, you know, we want to get them on the directory is that they have a membership in a league or an association or a conference that's really seriously pursuing esports because, you know, making that investment, both, you know, the resources to, you know, pay for dues to join a league, but also committing to a year long season and really fielding a full team um, over time rather than just for one pop up event is a big indicator as well. And, and it, it's, it's kind of a, it's tricky, you know, mm -hmm. with collegiate esports being so nascent and with, with the information about programs being so scattered and disorganized and hard to find, it, it, it's tough to really have your finger on the pulse of which programs are existing, which programs are good. I mean, there's amazing programs with arenas and scholarships that have existed for two years that I just heard about you know, two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, but as Alex mentioned, I think one of the, the ways that we're keen on making sure we get really robust, legitimate programs on there is uh, having close connections and relationships with the leagues that constitute the space of collegiate esports. Um, you know, those relationships and having sort of uh, just a pathway where we can get updates about, hey, you know, here's some new schools that have joined. Are these guys on your platform? And building those those fibers that's that's a helpful piece of it yeah and, and the last thing i want to ask is you know have you guys gotten any feedback from students or parents using your platform because you know for us uh obviously we're very much so insular we're in it we know a lot of these schools we know a lot of the information have you guys gotten a response from folks who are kind of outside of you know the everyday of, of collegiate esports that have used the platform and what has their reaction been to what you guys have built yeah i think <clears throat> for me you know a big distribution channel that i've just kind of been working on in my spare time is reddit 
um, because I'm on Reddit all the time. And I will post a link to a school or, you know, I'll post a link to the, to the directory. And every time, you know, I'll get five folks who are like, oh my gosh, I'm the parent of a kid who plays, you know, Fortnite nonstop. This is a really eye-opening resource for me. Um, so I've definitely heard a lot of just sort of anecdotal positive feedback from parents. Um, same deal with, you know, high school coaches who are working with teams and trying to help them find their collegiate communities. They've really responded positively. And, you know, James O'Hagan in Wisconsin has really been using this as a tool to try to organize scrimmages between his high school and college teams. Um, and then, yeah, we've actually started to kind of connect that pipeline between students who are signing up on our site and college coaches. So we've managed to make a couple of those connections between students and coaches already, which has been great. Awesome. Awesome. And so what, you know, what is the next step for, for looking for group? You guys have built this database, you know, at, at what point are you guys looking to, uh, or what else are you guys looking to add to the platform? Are you looking to do things like combines that we've seen a lot of over the past year, or are you guys completely wanting to go into the database space and, uh, completely run that, you know, what's next? I think for us, we're right now, like we have a really good foothold in college because that's kind of where we started working, you know, almost two years ago in esports. Um, we're kind of building that network down into high school. And I think our, our, our next goal, right, is to create um, a side of the site, which is kind of to be announced, that is going to allow those two um, groups to more easily connect with each other and to play together. Um, so that's awesome. huge on the roadmap. And then I would say the other thing is that, I mean, we're partnering with with you folks at, you know, Checkpoint XP, and we're trying to do some content syndication to really just help um, get that information about programs out to a broader audience um, in terms of content. So yeah. I'm trying to partner I, there, hopefully. Another, yeah. another sort of category of development that we're really excited to pursue is finding just unique and creative ways to help a student really feel what it's like to be a part of the program. You know, when we were first sort of conceiving of this site and doing some some research and looking, hey, what other sites are out there, maybe in traditional sports or adjacent industries? One thing that we found is that a lot of similar search directories, they go a mile wide, but they go an inch deep. So they have every possible listing on there, but the information is relatively shallow. And we wanted to sort of flip the script and go, you know, an inch wide and just get, you know, the 300 or 400 schools or whatever, but go a mile deep and really provide some rich content for the students and also for the schools in terms of, you know, having a coherent, organized, attractive presentation of their, their program. So things like coach interviews, you know, we're really excited about continuing those developments and just thinking about other kind of unique and creative content that we can get on those profiles to make it a, yeah, just a really sort of rich set of information when a, when a student comes and visits. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's awesome. Cause like, as I was, as a college student, like the number one thing college kids need is information, especially in like, as you said, it's tricky. So it's really awesome just to have that information just there at a great uh, location. Yeah. yeah. And, and I've used the, the, uh, the platform and the database myself just to do a little bit of research before we talk to you guys. And I really, really think it's an awesome thing. And, you know, Jesse, you mentioned the coach interviews, and I think that is probably one of the single most, uh, compelling parts about the platform. If I was a college kid or if I was a high school senior looking to go into a program and I and I see this coach and they're vibrant and they're excited and they're talking about the things that they want to do with their program and what they've already done with their program, I'm just more motivated uh, to apply to that school. So I thought that was an awesome touch yeah, yeah. that you guys put that into the platform. It, you know, it, you're totally right. It, it makes a huge difference because, I, you know, I played collegiate soccer. And if there were a, a, a space where I could have gotten a, a sense of what the coach was like before I was applying it and decided where to play, that would make a huge difference. I mean, how many students who play not only esports but any traditional athletics do you hear stories of their experience being either, you know, made amazing or having not so good of a time because of the coach? So for them to just, you know, see who's behind the program and get a sense of their vibe and personality is a really important thing that I think 
should exist on more sites who are doing similar things across traditional sports and, and other industries. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, Alex, Jesse, thank you so much guys for joining us. These guys are from uni esports, the creators of looking for group. And, um, what's the website guys? Cause I like, I like for the people who made it to yeah. give out the website. So where can everybody find this database? Yeah. So check it out at lfgroup.gg. lfgroup.gg. Yeah. That's right guys. And listen, as you heard, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff with looking for groups. So make sure that you guys stay tuned for that. And we are going to have more coming up on Checkpoint on campus. Stay tuned.